Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Amherst Design Review Board. Today is July 22nd, 2024. And my name is Erica Zikas, and I'm the chair of the board. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take roll call, and when I call your name, please uh, unmute yourself and answer in the affirmative. Uh, Lindsay Schnarr is not present. Karen Winter, also present. not present this evening. Present. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mixed you up. Karen, apologies. Karen yes. Winter, present. Pat Oth. Present. Karen Blum, not present this evening, and Erica Zikos, present. Board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raised hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. And after speaking, please remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regard regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the meeting via Zoom, uh, sorry, if you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with the guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation may be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. We'll start with general public comment period, and then we will review application DRB FY 2024-25, the Jones Library comprehensive review of the updated site and building plans for the library renovation and expansion. And then we'll approve uh, past meeting minutes and head to some other business, which um, may include updating DRB guidelines conversation. And that is it. And so um, if there's anybody in the uh, audience tonight who would uh, like to speak, please raise your hand and let us know. Jason, did you see anybody? Yes, there's one person from WMass RC Zoom. Sorry, struggling with the unmuting. Uh, my name is Lydia Vernon Jones. I live on Gaylord Street, uh, very close to the library. And um, I was a member of the Net Zero Committee that was successful in passing the net zero bylaw for our town. And at that point, we knew we were in trouble about the library building because the original plan did not go for the extra money that the state would have provided um, to make it more sustainable. Um, I've been a part of every committee that's regrouped to um, be opposed to the larger uh, library with the demolition. And uh, I'm just here to say that uh, sustainability measures should not be cut, uh, that the town shouldn't spend any more money on this 
project and we should have a plan B that does just the essentials at this point and we need to put our money into being sure our other buildings are sustainable. Thank you for being on this committee. I appreciate the chance to speak to you. Thanks. Thank you for your comments, Lydia. I don't see any other hands in the, oh, here we go. Okay. We are bringing in Maria. Oh, uh, did, were you able to hear me when I was speaking yeah. or not yet? We, no. we can hear you, Maria. Okay, I got a double unmute, sorry. Okay. Um, so I just want to clarify, um, the comments are, this is general comments, um, general uh, public comment. Are, is there going to be an opportunity, did you say there's going to be an opportunity to speak about the issue at hand today, which is the Jones Library at a separate time? Is that correct? And would you like me to wait until then, which is fine? We generally don't have a big audience for these meetings, and we often have the one public comment period. Um, and so you are welcome to uh, speak to whatever topic is on your mind, uh, because there's only the one item on the agenda tonight. Okay, but I mean, uh, is there going to be a presentation and then before you do take any action, is there going to be an opportunity for public comment before that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. There will be presentation tonight from the architects and landscape architects. Okay, I, I, I would just as soon wait to, to hear the presentation and then before this committee takes any action, to, uh, I would appreciate uh, an opportunity for public comment to happen then. Thank you. Yeah, heard you. Chris? I just wondered um, if you would remind people to state their full name and their address when yes. they come on. Thank you very Thank you much. I will do that. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, where is Jacinta on my screen? There you are. Got you. Um, Jacinta, is there anybody else right now for the general public comment period? I don't see any right. other hands. Okay, great. Well then, um, to all the folks from um, Feingold Alexander and the library and um, Rachel Loeffler, good to see you tonight. Um, if you would like to uh, begin your presentation, we welcome that. Thank you for being here. And please remember to uh, introduce yourselves. Um, we have seen you before, but it'd be nice for you to do that for the record. Hi, everybody. I'll just do a really quick intro. My name is Sharon Cherry. I'm the director of the Jones Library. Uh, with us today are representatives from Feingold Alexander. We have Tony Shaw, uh, Josephine Penta, and from Berkshire Design Group, we have Rachel Leffler and Jess Schoendorf. And uh, from the town of Amherst, we have Bob Parent. And I think I'm going to hand it over to Tony for the presentation. Sharon, um, I'll go right at it. So I know everyone is uh, just anxious to start to see where we are and uh, let me begin. And if I have any issues, I just mean as a backup if my computer glitches. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, looks great. Okay, great. So tonight's presentation will really be to share with uh, folks um, what has sort of changed um, as a result of trying to deal with you know budgetary um, issues. So we're gonna share with you the areas that affects the architecture portion um, mostly on the exterior. And then Rachel in particular will be a large part of the focus for tonight on the landscape. So I'm just going to go right at it and just talk about the architectural impact and changes. So this first drawing, I know it's very technical in nature, but this is essentially what we marked up in all of these cases in red, what we call the proposed VE or value engineering changes. This is a roof plan of the design. And I will point out several key things. So, and I hope you can see my mouse hovering here. So what we have here is that this portion, we originally had a roof monitor that extended above the sort of central reading area on the second floor or the top level. 
has now been removed. And as a result of that, we also do have the opportunity to provide additional roof space for solar PV. So that is one change that I'm just going to point out right here. The second change is that we are looking at an alternate roofing material option here, um, which is exploring the change from the current synthetic slate to asphalt shingles on the a portion of the original 1928 edition that's outlined in this red cloud. And this does pertain to the original 1928 edition. This is, again, part of the value engineering exercise to establish what the budget savings might be if we go to a sort of architectural asphalt shingle versus a synthetic slate product. So again, I'm just going to kind of go through the items. Sorry, this may be taking a little while to load up. So the second part is on the elevations themselves. So this top drawing is, of course, the primary um, uh, Main Street elevation viewing here. And the main thing that we just looking here is that now the idea is to keep the existing windows in the 1927 and 28 building. So the original intent was to replace all of these windows with new windows that we're going to match the profiles and the look, but now we're actually looking at the idea of not replacing them, but keeping them as they are. Uh, so that is that is the one change that we're pricing as part of this exercise. The other just, part, again, this is the year. Sorry, sorry go ahead. just to add to that, that um, is going to be an alternate in the documents. And so the base scope is how we presented to you um, several months back with um, new sashes, but um, the proposed alternate would be a deduct alternate, and that would be for the windows to remain as remain. they are. Right. Sorry, Tom. Um, and then here you can see the air that's outlined in this portion here. This is what we're looking at as the alternate to change from the synthetic slate to the asphalt shingles. I know this is probably not an eye chart, but for example, uh, this was the, in the upper left was the original proposed synthetic slate, which looks like that. And then the sort of more architectural asphalt shingles looks like this. So these are the things that we're again, exploring from a cost and budgetary standpoint on the existing 1928 edition. The rest of the part here um, in the lower section what is visible here that I just mentioned previously, that roof monitor, which was sort of outlined here, this is an elevation from the back or the north side, is no longer there, obviously, because it's taken out. Um, I'm also going to, however, point out that the other materials that were proposed on the new addition is still going, still going to remain as previously proposed. It is brick, cladding, uh, sort of a hardy plank product here, and then this sort of metal roofing here. So that is still intact the way that was originally designed on the new addition part. And as we go to now the side elevations, the top one is on the west uh, here in this drawing. So again, very simply, the existing windows, the same issue, the VDL Dalton is to keep. Um, sorry to interrupt you, Tony. The yep. image had, oh, there we go. I hadn't generated yet. Just came on. Sorry. My, my computer may be slow to catch up. Can everyone see this? Yeah, now we can see. Okay. So again, the idea here is to show that the... Uh, Budget alternate is to keep the existing windows uh, to remain as a deduct, and then again to uh, replace the uh, roof material from that synthetic slate to the asphalt shingles, again on the 1920 edition. And again here, this just simply outlines where that roof monitor that originally was designed has now been eliminated. And then furthermore, if we go here now to the east elevation in this drawing that I'm circling here, it's same thing, uh, the removal of the roof monitor, the uh, alternate to keep the existing windows basically all across this entire uh, 1928 you know, existing wing, and then to explore the alternate to replace the roofing material with asphalt shingles instead of slate. So it's the same items that are applying across all of these elevations. And then um, we did still, and we still do have mechanical screens on the top roof that has not changed. We're still showing this sort of uh, louver mechanical screen system. So there's no change here. Um, and then um, what we're going to get into, uh, and Rachel is going to get into this more detail, but regarding lighting, we'll, we'll elaborate on that. But again, there are going to be changes that you're going to see coming forth about the pathway lighting because of the change to the landscape at the front. Um, and then uh, most of the existing lighting that we previously proposed at the rear on the new addition is not changing. So there is some impact on some of this lighting here, but this is more in Rachel's court. Um, 
And I think um, the other thing, this is just a detail of the window uh, area that I just discussed. And so the existing uh, window section is that. Um, and again, the, the alternate is to keep the existing window as is versus the replacement, um, which was shown here. So this, this is just by way of explanation, the technical drawings is showing the comparison of the existing versus the original proposed. So that that's the that's the architectural elements. Um, do you want me to allow questions here, Erica, or do we just keep flowing into Rachel's part and just let the whole presentation go? Yeah, I, I think that um, if I'm looking at um, Karin and, and Pat and wondering if you have any questions that are burning right now, let's ask them while well, Tony's got these images up on the screen. Um, but if you can hold, if it's possible to hold your questions until we see all of the, the updates or the proposed changes, um, then we, we could do that if it's not urgent. I just have a, a very short question. The roof monitor, what exactly was the function of the roof monitor to bring daylight it was a clear story um monitor karen that stretched the, across the section that was above the uh, main reading area on the top floor of the new piece that was here so as part of the v exercise to reduce cost we eliminated it so mm -hmm. previously there was a monitor that was proposed and designed here we've taken that out thank Think you skylight but, yeah if, if, if technically not a skylight because right. it isn't, you know, I mean, you have a skylight now, this is a monitor, but same principle, it's trying to bring daylight into the middle. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Any any other questions? We move yes, on. I saw your hand up briefly. Karen, I was just going to offer the word skylight. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, technically it's not really, it was not really a skylight. Um, so. Okay. Um, well, uh, Tony, if you wouldn't mind, um, Keep, don't put these drawings away. We yep. will likely return to them, but if you want to continue with the presentation. Yes, and it may take a little Please. second to catch up. Tell do me. You, do you want to start at the photometrics plan? Um, it's Rachel up to you, Rachel. Just... Do you want to begin here or do you want to begin at your design? This is now Rachel's course. We, we, can, uh, we can start with photometrics. Okay. Um, here. And, and I'd just like to shout out to Jess, who's been a big part of... Um, working through those BE um, items and along also Greg in our office, who's been doing a lot of the infrastructure, stormwater juggling behind the scenes to make things um, a little bit more affordable. Um, so we we had, we've um, presented to you lighting before. Um, and since then we've received some feedback from, from the library building committee. Um, there's some concern that we were still a little a little too um, dimly lit on site in some places. Um, Jess and I in the winter went on site and we walked um, down Amity Street and we walked down North Pleasant. And we also looked at one University Drive just to get a baseline of what the existing foot candles are in town. Um, we use multiple light meters, apps on our phones, and then a digital light meter. Um, what we found is that Amity Street, especially and the corner of North Pleasant, are are dimly lit, which is kind of in character with town. Um, we were getting foot candle readings of 0.3 to 0.8 on average on the sidewalk. Um, there were some exceptions, like the new brewery was uh, with um, they have catenary lighting out front. And they had a foot candle reading of three. Um, the Library committee requested that we consider trying to bring lighting up to one foot candle on site, at least on the main pathways. Um, so that is our our task. We are in process. This is a request that happened um, or, uh, last week. So we are in process with the lighting representative to see if we can continue to bring the foot candles up. Um, another item that we're concerned about, and our lighting designer has assured us that the, each light fixture is dimmable. So in the event that um, the lighting's installed and everything is brought up to that one foot candle, if it seems like it's too bright and too out of context with um, the library would be able to manually be able to adjust the lighting on site to, to make it fit better with, with the context. So that's one thing that we're I'm really glad that that's an option to do. 
Um, so the areas that we um, that were identified as less than one foot candle, um, and Tony, I don't know if you can um, let the air over. There's a there's a bike rack area in the front, which is just adjacent to the the parking lot. Um, we were below a foot candle there, so um, we're gonna add another bollard in the planting area and, and see if that brings that up. Um, oh, perfect. And then at the front, the front entry plaza area, we um, were keeping the existing historical fixtures in the front, which um, are they, they, they fit really well from an aesthetic viewpoint, but um, illumination wise, they need a little bit more assistance. So um, I think, Josephine, do you want to speak to what you're doing there? Yeah, um, we've been working. Um both FA and DDG have been working through this lighting um, pretty intensely. And uh, and so there will be a couple um, of additional building lights. Um, they will look similar. They, they are the same lights that are in the chart at the top right. Um, we're not introducing any new lights, but we will be adding a couple. And so where, where you see the F2 symbols there, we will have um, an additional F2 on each wing side there to get more light into the um, that front entryway and the book drop. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only additional building light at the moment at the front area. Um, in addition, uh, we've, as part of the value engineering process, and I'll walk, walk you through that a little bit later, but um, we've eliminated the Goshen stone bench seat walls, benches. So though, uh, we have two, we have two types of walls, freestanding walls on site. Originally one is just a seat wall with no back. And then, um, and that happens right at the patio area, um, defining the edge of the patio area. And then we had uh, large Goshen seat benches with backs um, in the front, and we've eliminated those. Those are items as we were working through the VE process we, for the site, we were trying to find things that could um, be removed that had a big dollar value that also could be added later at a different time if um, if funding became available or donors um, wanted to help help with that aspect of it. So the Goshen stone benches in front that were removed also had lighting integrated underneath them. Um, so to just for that, we um, added an additional bollard into the planting bed on either side of the front entry. Um, and it filled in the gap where the Goshen stone benches were with um, with more of the rhododendron plantings. Uh, additional areas that we were asked to look at were the um, in the north part of the property, um, in the back corner where the north entry is, and that new site retaining wall. As we are dropping down to 0 0.3, 0 0.2 foot candles. Um, the committee was concerned about perception of safety as you moved along that wall um, and bringing those up. We do think that there'll be a lot of glow from the building. It's a beautiful building with windows into the interior spaces. So there will be um, our, our, our uh, rep and doesn't have the capacity or capability to model that, that additional light that may be coming out from the building. Um, but uh, we are looking at putting some wall-mounted lights here. Josephine, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so the additional um, lights that we're adding are the F6 lights um, on the west wall of that addition where there's no symbol at the moment. Um, that's where we'll introduce two more um, of those F6 lights to get more light on that pathway. And that's where it was dim. Um, more so at the pinch point of where the retaining wall is against the addition, the, the wall of the addition. And so we'll be introducing two lights more centralized in between the windows at that point. Additionally, in the, in the north patio area, again, where we removed uh, some of those Goshen stone uh, seat walls, uh, we dropped down now to um, 0.8 foot candles. Um, and so we're asking the lighting designer to move the pole mounted A3 fixture down a little bit to see if that can help bring up the foot candles in that area since we're so close. Um, so those are the those are the changes that is hot off the press, some changes that are happening to the lighting. 
Could I ask someone to use, I don't know who's driving at this point, um, to show us on the, with the mouse where you were just speaking to, Rachel? Yeah. Um, Tony, can you see uh, in the North patio area, can you see where the light spill diagram, there's a gap there between the two A3 fixtures? I don't know if I can mark up, can I mark up on in this? I can annotate, yes, I will annotate right here. So right, right in, oh, right in here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I quickly ask what is an F6? When you say F6, that you're replacing? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the light fixtures are at the top right of the page. I don't know, Tony, if you can zoom out a little bit. Um, we have a legend at the top right that shows the um, the fixture types. And so the F6 is more economical than what was originally planned? or So F6 is what we originally planned. It's the same one. We're just adding a couple more where we have some um, dark spots. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. thank you. So Karen, do you see here that yes. on I that see. sheet, the different right. fixture types that they're referring yeah, to? Helpful. Yeah, okay, thanks, yeah. Okay. All right, is that it for lighting then? I think oh, one other thing that we're um, going to be doing is adding in-step lighting at the front steps. Uh, to help bring up the foot candles in that area, uh, and we're hopeful that 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 will help that will help um, resolve any deficiencies in the front. In step lighting. Mm -hmm. Could you describe that for for us? Yeah, on the 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 vertical riser, the vertical face of this of the concrete steps, we'd be um, embedding to like an LED downline on either side of the step. Thank you. Thanks. I think of that area where 0.7 or 0.8. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. I'll say it over again. Um, it's my recollection that it, it was supposed to be handicap accessible to the main entrance because the side entrance would no longer be used and that there would be a ramp system as opposed to steps. Will there both be a ramp and steps? Yes, Pat, we, we have two accessible walkways into the main entry. Um, the steps are... Uh, a shortcut if there is any way like some people call goat pass to the front door okay um, so we, we're fully accessible to all the all the entries um, unless unless of course you want to take the goat path thank you i appreciate the clarification mm -hmm. all right and i i think that we'll hold on comments unless it's specific to lighting at this point and then we'll jump into kind of general questions after the presentation so, Karin, is your question about, your hand is up, is your question about lighting? I'm sorry. I didn't want my hand to be up, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, and Chris? Yeah, I just wondered, um, maybe Bob Parent is the person to answer this question, but the drawings that Bob gave me last week, I think it was Friday maybe or Thursday, um, those I think were different from the lighting that we're seeing tonight, is that correct? I believe there was an updated photometric plan that was included in the hard copies that I gave you last week. Okay, so what you gave me last week is essentially what is being shown tonight. Is that right? I believe so. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking at what we have in our our packet, like what was uh, part of tonight's meeting packet, and it's 
I well, I haven't looked at every foot candle measurement, but it looks very much similar to what was just presented. Okay, onward. Um, so stepping out from lighting, uh, we're, you know, we, we again, we're trying to find the most expensive items because it will have the biggest effect in a, in a value engineering um, exercise. Uh, and we're also looking at items that could be removed uh, entirely or reduced without detriment to the project um, or items that could be removed and then uh, put back in at a later date as a as a whole as a whole entity. Uh, so in the and and then um, some of the changes are visual will have a notable um, difference out front as you look at the library um, front and back. And some of them are hidden, the infrastructure changes that um, that folks will not see as they are on the library. Um, and But we've been able to ensure functionality with those changes um, is preserved. So in the in the front, um, one of the biggest changes to the to the budgetary items um, is our stormwater approach. And I can walk through that in more detail. Um, but you know, in the big picture. Any time that we add impervious surface, and that's a fancy word for you know paving or roof surface on a site, uh, we have to accommodate the increase in stormwater runoff that's coming off quickly from those surfaces on site before it leaves the site. We're tasked with balancing what we call pre and post flows so that a new project and new impervious surface doesn't impact downslope or downstream areas. Um, and so our civil engineer goes through a quite a detailed process of calculation and modeling uh, to make sure that we are meeting those those flow rates and plans. Um, so originally with the library, we knew that we were adding on to the back an increase in pervious area, uh, and we we had you know downspouts in the front and downspouts in the back. So our original approach was kind of to split the sum of the stormwater runoff from the front and the back. So we had a subsurface system in the front, taking some of that rainwater coming off the roof in the front and storing it on site and then slowly releasing it out. Um, then And then in addition, we had the back half of the library um, sent to a rain garden we call it the rain, we call it a stormwater sandwich because it had both a rain garden with storage capacity above that you could see visibly with the eye, and then subsurface storage. Those they look like Lego blocks underneath the ground to hold the water and slowly release it. So that's what we originally had, um, and then that system goes through an existing. Um, today, the library's stormwater goes through the fire station uh, parking lot and now into North Pleasant Street. We were able to do, um, Greg did a lot of a lot of trial and error and figured out that he was able to increase the subsurface storage on the north side of the library enough to eliminate the need for the subsurface, subsurface system at the front. So not only does it have a cost savings, that also is better for the library long-term because maintenance of those systems, they now just have one system to maintain instead of two. Um, in addition, that also involved regrading that area out back to have a little, just a little bit more storage capacity above grade in the rain garden area um, to accommodate those changes that we, we talked about. So now all of the roof water downspouts go to that back area um, and all the impervious surface goes to, goes to that back area. Uh, and so we are able to balance pre and post flow with a much simpler system that's just concentrated in that in that back area. So it still goes through the fire department area, fire department parking lot, um, but it, there's quite a bit of savings. Um, and it, with that regrading of the rain garden area, um, we've been able to eliminate the bridges, which not all these changes we're excited about, but some of them are necessary, right? Um, but we still think the rain garden is going to be a nice feature to walk through uh, coming to the library. So we've been able to eliminate the bridges. Um, so before we had three, we had one big basin, and that was about two and a half feet deep at its deepest, uh, that then the bridges and the walkways crossed over. Um, 
we were able to regrade and now we have three little basins that the, um, the walkways walk past and the basins are connected through piping and yard drains. So again, we've been able to save quite a bit. Those, um, those bridge structures are very expensive. So uh, we've been able to save quite a bit with that, with those changes. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, we've eliminated the Goshen stone benches from, from the scope. Uh, those are items that could be added later. And then the, the children's patio that could, is removed um, as, an, as an item that could come back at a later time as a separate project if, if there's desire. Um, and again, in the front, we've removed the Goshen stone benches. In the fire station parking area, there are a bunch of utilities um, that are existing that serve the fire station and the, the commercial building to the south and the library's um, drainage and sewer goes through there. The existing sewer line is undersized and needs to be replaced. And the, you know, we, we need to accommodate the drainage for the library as discussed. So we've been able to limit the footprint of our trenching and utility placement in that area to provide only the, the service for the library and um, not, not disturb those other existing utilities. So again, we've narrowed that scope and really, really sharpened our pencils to make sure that we're only, um, you know, that we're providing the same functionality for the library. Um, okay, next slide. So these are the, the sheets that we submitted. Um, we've marked up the, origi the original bid documents with the changes that we're, that we're proposing. So the first sheet is the existing condition survey there. As far as we know, there have not been any changes to that. Next page. And the same for, these are the enlargements of the survey. Next page. Um, at this time, there are, and there are no more, there are no changes to our logistics plan that we've, that we've talked to you through before. Um, there are no changes to the demo plan in the in the front, but at the back there are a couple changes. So what this is showing is that we've reduced the footprint of disturbance on the fire department parking lot to be the area only where the sewer line and the drainage line go for the library. Um, we heard from the historical society that they would like their fence relocated that is within the footprint of the temporary construction access. Um, and so that's something that we're gonna update in our drawings that, that that the contractor will relocate it to the location that the historical society would prefer. Um, and then before we were, we were salvaging the granite veneer from the existing wall and incorporating it and reusing it for the new wall. Um, and that's something that we've, um, we've eliminated the granite veneer from that retaining wall and we're gonna be using um, the color admix in the concrete for the walls. So we're just going to have a, a a concrete wall um, with real, and and then the the metal railings, but a much simpler system. Um, and we've even talked about the possibility of a future mural there if it's something that the library would be interested in um, as a as a separate project. Again, so in the front. Um, We've eliminated the children's patio area. However, we do have to provide um, emergency egress out, out the back door. Um, so we have a, a little bit of a concrete paved area coming out the door with some steps down. Um, and then we've eliminated those big uh, Goshen stone seat benches from the front. Okay, next slide. Um, at the back, this is this is what we had previously, so a much more substantial utility footprint within the fire department alley, fire department parking lot, excuse me, and then um, the showing you the footprint of the subsurface system that we had before. So next slide. Um, and then this is our layout material plan at the back, the changes. So again, we have a much smaller footprint of disturbance to the fire department parking lot. 
Um, and then in the back, we've removed the Goshen stone bench. Um, we've removed the veneer from the wall. Um, and we've taken uh, some of the cafe tables and chairs out of the contractor scope, as that's something that the library could add in um, at a later date. Next slide. Um, and then the grading for the children's area patio is, is graded to accommodate that future patio if, it, if it's desired. Next slide. And then this is the new grading. So this is showing those three basins and their yard drains in the middle um, rather than one big, one big basin. Okay, next slide. Um, so in removing the children's patio, we're going to replace it with lawn. Um, and then we're going to be planting uh, with uh, filling in the gaps where those Goshen stone benches were in the front with, with more bushes, more shrubs. Next slide. And then at the back, this is another item, the planting in the rain garden. Um, before we had uh, a really wonderful palette of carrots and sedges um, and sedums and mosses and ferns really low maintenance planting that would have a variety of color and texture that people could walk through. Um, you know, the design's still on record if anyone wants to build it, but um, in the meantime, we uh, replaced it with uh, a Nomo meadow mix uh, for that area that um, will be, once it is it's a little bit more challenging to establish, it will take up to three seasons, but um, when it does, it'll, be less maintenance for the library long term. So it's a mix of fescues that um, grow to about 18 inches and they flop over and just help pull this image of what it looks like, kind of looks like like waves in the landscape. Um, and it, it, it's called no mow because you don't have to mow it. Um, it's recommended to mow at least once a year in November to get the seed heads out. But um, it it's something too that if, you know, if the, there's an issue and the library does want to mow it more frequently, they can they can mow it at a, at a four inch height. So it gives some flexibility to maintenance in the future. Um, so we still have the stepping stones and, and the seating boulders in the garden. Okay, next slide. So this is the previous utility plan that was submitted, just showing where that subsurface system was located previously, and now it's eliminated. We've, it's also helped us eliminate um, two manholes, two drainage manhole structures, and a um, fair amount of piping uh, for that system. So that that helps with the savings. Next slide. And this is showing uh, how that how we we don't have that anymore in the front. Um, and we are now uh, rerouting all the roof drains to the back through piping underground. Next slide. And this is our previous utility plan. The next slide. We talked about that. We've talked about that already. Okay, next slide. Um, and then this is showing that the that retaining wall at the at the north entry that we've um, we're going to concrete removing the granite veneer. Next slide. Um, I think we can keep keep scrolling through the sheets, Tony. Yeah, just uh, this is just showing what you know what we've pulled out from the project. Um, custom stamps of birds. Birds of Amherst in the concrete um, are no longer going to happen. And then removing the veneer on the wall. And then removing those benches. Removing the rain garden crossing. and adding an additional row to the subsurface system. So Tony and Josephine,
do you want me to keep talking through these or did you guys want to talk about the renderings? Oh, Tony, you're muted still. Sorry, I think, um, yeah, we just took the liberty of showing the original renderings always in the lower right corner here and then the updated renderings, most of which has to do with the landscape treatment. As I said, the building exterior is mostly in proposed change or even material shift on a roof or keeping the existing windows or not. So there's very little that is going to look different in terms of the exterior of the architecture. And as Rachel said, most of it is revolving around landscape elements that you can see in these perspective views. Um, but I don't know, Rachel, if there's anything more you want to say to this? Sure. Sure. So this is showing that the um, the children's area, we still have the, the shrubs now. They're continuous across the front. Um, and we we asked the artist to uh, not limb up the spruce tree. So um, that's more more what it'll look like when when it's built. Um, we could go to the next slide if, you, if you're ready, Tony. And this is this is the original design, in the little right, and then this is the proposed revised. Um, so you can see there are people si sitting on on the the seat wall, not the bench. The seat wall at that front patio area in this rendering. Um, and another change is that we we had wanted to kind of keep the palette really um, simple in the front with purples and whites and a little splash of yellow. Um, so we did find a, a hydrangea that it has a, um, a a deep purple color that I think will that we think will look, will look better with that air with the design as a whole. And then you can see that again those those um, the rhododendrons are now across where the where those seat wall benches used to be. So those are the big changes for that area. Again, before now, the only thing that that just from an architectural standpoint that just changes this roof monitor element that we described before here is now gone. So of course you don't see anything now here. And from the from the site perspective, we've eliminated the that large Goshen stone bench. Um, the plantings within the rain gardens have been replaced by Nomo. Um, it's hard to see from this perspective. Yeah. And then the other piece is that um, the foreground fencing that looks like a grid is the existing fence on the Historical Society property. So this view is from the Historical Society property looking towards that north entry. Um, and since they've requested us to remove that, the final final um, view from this position will not look like this. That fence will be somewhere else to be determined by the Historical Society. Um, and then some of the some of the site furnishings and things you you won't see from this view, the changes. Again, main difference is the elimination of the roof monitor here to here. And then from the site, we've removed um, the granite veneer on the site retaining wall. We've uh, uh, replaced the planting with the Nomo fescue. We've eliminated the cafe tables and chairs that were on the side of the entry. And then we've removed the big uh, Goshen stone bench between the patio area and the rain garden. And then we've removed the um, the, the bridges and regraded so that we only have a couple of yard drains instead. So I think that basically brings us up to speed on the landscape. Um, so I think right now that basically brings the presentation to an end here on the materials. So I think now we can open up to questions and I can always move back and forth to any drawings that folks wish to see. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the for the really thorough presentation. Um, I'm, I would like to, um, briefly ask the D members of the DRB if you have any clarifying questions. And Chris, I see your hand is up. So I'll invite you to speak. And then I think we will pause since there are so many people in the audience tonight to hear if there's any 
um, public comment, and then we'll engage in, in discussion of the board. So clarifying questions for the design designers and then um, public comment, and then we'll have our discussion. So Chris, I see your hand. Yeah, I had a question about the planting of trees in the back. Um, you've eliminated you know, shrubs and different kinds of plantings that are rather low, but it looked like from the planting plan that you were still um, proposing to have trees back there. So I just wanted to get that clarified. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good clarification. Yes, we're keeping all the shade trees, all the trees that were in the project are remaining. Thank you. Okay, great. So I don't see, oh, Pat, please. My question for clarification is the roof of the original building is needs re-roofing. And um, I, I understand the, the, the value economically of, of, of uh, trying to save money on that, but um, is there a way to have uh, shingles that would be more compatible with the, what looks like slate? I know that you showed us what was originally planned and then what's planned now. And is, is there something in the cost area that can look more like slate, even if it's not what you originally chose? Well, Josephine, okay. if you want to weigh in on that question um, from Pat. Sure, yeah. Um, the What we had chose was the synthetic slate, and um, that is what we brought to you, um, you know, at the last at the last meeting. And um, and that still is in the base scope as a, um, as a, as a replacement for that roof. Um, however, the alternate that Tony had mentioned earlier um, was uh, for asphalt um shingles just because of that yeah that economical value um from our research i don't think we found anything in between those two um as far as cost savings and you know what could um uh replace that um so those are really um, the two that would be um as similar to a backup system um and comparable to to um each other at at two different price points, of course, but um, still both cheaper than, of course, replaced with um, with slate itself. And the other part of my question is how much of the original building will be re-roofed with the asphalt shingles? So um, it would be the same proposal as the as the um, the last, which would be the um, entire 1928. All building. of it. All of it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if you have anything uh, within reach that describes, or if you could verbally describe a little bit more of the shingle since we're on that topic and I suspect that that'll come up in comment. Um, we saw uh, a tiny little you know, kind of spec sheet image, but could you describe its uh, dimensions, longevity, et cetera? Is it a 50 year architectural product. Um, How much on, exposure is there? How does it compare dimension to the slate? Sorry, are you asking Erica about the um, the synthetic slate product? I'm asking the about the asphalt, asphalt shingle. Asphalt. Yeah. So um, we don't have spec information to share at the moment, but um, if we go back to the image at least, um, it's somewhat of a basic um, shingle that you see a lot. We can send images um, of what that would look like. Um, we also can provide the spec information. I just don't have it at hand at the moment. Okay. Um, but, um, and again, with the warranty, it should stand up to the same um, uh, warranty that um, the synthetic has. Uh, but again, the spec information will have that, and we can send that over to you. Um, uh, yeah, so there's the image there on the screen. And so the synthetic slate, 
of course, you know, it's called synthetic because it, it mimics it, right? It, it, it's, um, it's trying to, to look like slate, right? And the asphalt is, is just its, its own, um, its own look. Um, not too different because it's far away, it's up high, and it would be in the darker tone. So it's difficult to see in the rendering, and, and that's why you really couldn't tell. Um, but we, we can send some images and the spec information over to you um, for all of that to, to um, respond further. In terms of within the um, sometimes they can also be called architectural asphalt shingles, which are not obviously real shingles, but there are the degree of that asphalt also can be predicated with creating some variegation in the shingles. It doesn't look as artifice, you know, sometimes if all the things monolithic in the same tone, there's no variation, then that looks very artificial. So you can even see in the small picture sample, there's variation that absolutely helps achieve the kind of characteristic, particularly on the older historic buildings like the library. So it, it is a budget issue for sure. And we, we would love to retain the synthetic slate, but it, it's going to come down to dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question related to this that I I have um, is, is exactly what would the cost difference be? And I know you've been charged to make changes to reduce the cost. So I, I just am curious as to whether that's something that should be considered based on the cost, the, sure. the synthetic and, slate. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. So the difference we had found um, from synthetic to um, asphalt was um, around two, two, $225,000 approximately in cost. Yeah. So not an insubstantial sum of money. So in the end of the day, Pat, all of the FBE items that we're exploring here, all are going to tally up in the end and it will be predicated on you know how close are we able to get the library to the budget we need to be at so it, the, your decision or the decision about what can be kept or not uh, frankly is going to come down to a very bottom line different decision because it's all going to come to dollars and we're hopeful that the dollars not only saves the way we need to but we can try to retain as much of the key things which we all would love to retain the characteristics that, that everybody really wants to support i mean i would love to be able to say yeah it can be done, but I think right now at this point we're trying to be mindful um, of the of the dollars that are being allocated for the project as a whole. So this is certainly one of many factors we're looking at. Right, I, I understand that. I just, um, in terms of a historical perspective, the synthetic slate um, offers a look that exists today. Absolutely. And, and so I, I, that's why I wanted to know what the difference was. And I, I understand that you're adding, you're you're deducting each of these things that are changing to get to the right bottom line. But um, I, I'm also on the DRB as a representative of the Historical Commission, and I know you're going to be presenting to them. Yes, of uh, course. Very, very yeah. soon. Um, so I, oh. it's it's just of interest to me in the design review what would maintain the historical concept of the original building and what the gonna, cost I, factors. Sorry. I, I just want to, I want to hold our discussion until after we hear from the, the public. I'm so, sorry. I'm this sorry. Was just for clarifying questions. So it's been clarified. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll have plenty of time for discussion afterwards, but let's, um, uh, I can't see all, everybody until I zoom out a little bit. So, um, all right. So barring any other clarifying questions, let's open the floor to members of the public who would like to uh, make statements. And if I could remind you, please to um, use the raise hand function and uh, Jacinta will see you and, and let you in. You can unmute, um, please. Tell us who you are um, and where you live and make a comment um, up to three minutes, Max. Hilda Greenbaum is entering the room. Hi, Hilda. Hilda, can you unmute to make your comment? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> not. I'm from North Amherst, but I'm asking this as a, a member of the press 
questions for clarifying my article I'm writing. What was the class difference between the roof um, shingles and the asphalt? I, I didn't get that number. Sorry, I was muted. Um, about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Two twenty-five. Okay. Um, my next question is: There was a talk about changing the entrance doorway. It was rather complicated moving moving the threshold or something to accommodate the the book sorting machine. So I'm asking whether that's still going to happen or is there still going to be a, a hole in the stone wall being cut to accommodate a book depository? That's my second question. Yes, we're still planning on a book drop. So that's yes, okay. And the other thing that wasn't mentioned, are we still going with the interior that strips out all of the woodwork except for the uh, main staircase? Is that still in the plans to strip all the woodwork and replace it with modern in the 1928 building? No, that's no longer in the plan. So what, what's gonna, what is the latest um, rendition of the interior of the 1928 building? Um, and I just want to interject briefly, um, uh, Josephine, uh, Tony, you're welcome to answer that question briefly, but the purview of the design review board is about the exterior of the building, and we're here today to talk about the exterior presence of the building and its landscape, um, and obviously the interior as it affects the exterior, but uh, the details of interior woodwork, while they might be interesting to us, are not really part of the dialogue this evening. Hey, I just thought since you were discussing changes, I yeah. would ask. And then um, what was the monitor for that's being removed? The roof monitor. What was its function? Bring daylight into the main upper level okay. of the library. Okay. Um, which, we still, which we still have a lot of light coming into the library, even without that, because we have a lot of new windows. Yeah. Okay. And then my last question is, you're going to use the windows that are there, but they're in very bad repair. And so what what is the difference in cost to repair those windows, which are, you know, 100 years old and pretty rotten, with with fixing them up and making them more sustainable. How much money are you saving by, by not making the windows more sustainable, given the condition they're in? So we, we do still have that in the base scope as an, an alternate. We have um, replacement of them, and that was about a I I can't hear the thing you're saying. Can, can you fix your, your volume level? Can other folks hear me? I can't, well, I had this problem the other meeting too, that, that your voice is very soft. So the base scope is showing them still to um, be replaced. The alternate is um, indicating that they would remain and that was about a $70,000 change. A thousand dollar a window, is that it? $70,000 change for the existing- 70,000? 70,000 for the 1928 building. And that's what you're saving by repairing the old windows, is, is what you're saying? They will be that's, repaired? That's the difference in if, if we don't touch them. The alternate is to keep them existing to remain, and that would be a $70,000 difference. But, but they will be repaired, no? Where needed, yes. Okay, the pictures look like a lot of them needed. I got, all right, that's my question for the moment. Thank you. I'll just I, one point of clarification, just so you all know, these are estimates that you and you're quoting, and I know you're a reporter, but when you're quoting this, these are at this point just estimates. The final dollar amount savings will be all predicated on an actual contract bid. So uh, these numbers are at best estimates. So just be aware of that. 
and don't um, presume that it's just going to hold exactly to these numbers that you're asking about. Well, I'm going to say that perhaps the seventy thousand dollars would be eaten up pretty quickly by um, energy costs. Thank you, Hilda. And for those answers, uh, are there any other comments this evening from the public? Karen, I see your hand up, but I'll I'll move through the public comment first, if you don't mind. Mr. Ken Rosenthal is entering. Okay. Thank you. I'm Ken Rosenthal. I live on Sunset Avenue. It's the several comments. One, the, the general comment is the massing of this new structure itself the destruction of the addition and the massing of the building now is out of character with his historic character. So that alone is a violation, but I wanna to speak to more specifically smaller violations. One is to pick up on what Hilda said about the windows. If you're going to speak about the savings of the windows, you have to talk about not only the saving of not replacing them, but of then what it will cost to repair them. So you have to give us a net saving rather than simply the saving of not doing anything. That's uh, the same thing is true with the slate roof. The slate roof we know has a long life and to replace the roof now with what you are proposing on the entire building is altering two things. One, it's altering the historic character of the roof. And the other is it's a false saving because it's going to be, have to be replaced sooner. So you're just deferring the expense that down the road. And finally, if I understand what you said, we know we're not going to have at the present time an automatic book sorter, and yet you are still continuing to show a hole punch through the facade of the building. I just want to ask you, is that correct? Will somebody answer me? Is that correct? The hole, hole will be punched to the side of the building where the sorter would go, even though there will not be a sorter? That's what's that's, being shown on the drawing. That's correct. Yes. yes. Sorry, I couldn't get my mute button to work. Sorry. Yes. That is well, what we proposed. It, it, in that case, you would be saving, since we're not going to put the sorter in now, and the sorter may never come because it's very expensive. We do not know whether we'll need it or not. You will be saving additional money if you did not, if you did not violate that wall, and you will also be making an architectural statement, a negative one, if you do violate the wall. So what will it save if you do not put that hole through that wall? Can you tell us? No, we cannot. Um, we will you, cannot, we will don't you have a number for that. Our understanding was that a book drop is still um, required and requested by the library. That That is a possibility. It may never happen. If it does happen, it will be sometime down the road. And at that time, a, hotel, a hole can be punched through the wall. Meanwhile, if you don't do it now, you're going to save some money right now. And you're just going to, and, 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 and there's no point to putting a hole through there and then, and then having some kind of artificial cover waiting for something that may never happen. So I would appreciate it if you would tell the library folks, and I'm not one, so I'm just a member of the public, but tell us too, what you would be saving by by not putting a hole through that wall. And also for the design review board, please folks notice that that hole is gonna be destruction of the original facade, which is something you do not want to do. Thank you very much for listening to my questions and my comments. Thank you, Ken. Sharon, did you wanna provide a response to Mr. Rosenthal? Yeah, just to the part about the, the... <laughs> the hole, <laughs> the book drop hole. We need a book drop hole no matter what. Um, so this isn't just in case the automated materials handling system is installed, but patrons need to be able to return their books. Thanks. Jacinta, do we have anyone else? Miss Maria Kopicki. Hi, Maria. Remember to let us know who you are and where you live. 
Great, thank you. Maria Kapicki, South Amherst. Uh, I want to second a lot of the questions that Ken had. Um, you know, I, the asphalt uh, shingles, um, I think that's a really bad idea. Um, it is aesthetically problematic and it is also functionally problematic. Uh, and I think that making a comment that, oh, that we don't have the specs on that. I mean, you have to have the specs on that. You have to be able to present that to the DRB to know about this these asphalt shingles. So that's a problem and I don't think it should happen. The loss of the light monitor, it's not just daylighting. When you take away daylighting, it has an impact on energy use as well. Uh, so it's aesthetics and it's, uh, it's energy. Uh, in the list of VE items, there had been something to change from curtain wall to storefront windows. I don't believe that was in the 1928, but that I assume that's in the proposed edition. And I didn't see that presented here anywhere. So I would like you to talk about whether that's being planned either. Um, I have a problem with um, you guys using the term that you're exploring and you're having deduct alternates. You're trying to bridge a $7 million gap. I think it's pretty fair to say that if you're gonna bridge that kind of gap, we're not exploring and we're not alternates, that these changes are there, um, that this is what you are planning to do to try to get there. Um, one final thing is, you stated that taking out the light monitor will give you the opportunity to get more PV. To be clear to the public, there is no PV in this plan. And the minuscule amount that was even talked about way long ago um, would not have made much of a dent uh, in, uh, in it would be nowhere near net zero. It could not possibly come even to 10% of the needs of the building. So, um, I and, you know, we're talking about trying to save money and we're talking about a lot of other needs in town. So saying that, oh, this is great, we'll have more PV, that's a fantasy. Um, and I, I just don't think that that's, um, I think it's a little bit disingenuous. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. One more coming through. Okay, thanks. Greetings. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Would you introduce yourself, please? Yes. My name is Robert Pam. I am a former resident of Amherst uh, as of one month ago. Um, also a former trustee. I could go on, but uh, I'm going to limit myself to simple questions about the rear yard um, because I'm looking at the drawings now. What I am seeing is that that rear area, which had essentially been viewed in the earlier drawings as a place for people to gather, now has, as far as I can sell, tell, no seating other than what the library uh, employees will carry out each day um, near to the building. Uh, the uh, new plan for the uh, further reaches of the backyard um, are going to have uh, vegetation, which does not look particularly uh, amenable to, to putting out a, a uh, blanket and, and sitting there or you know having any kind of performances. So I'm just wondering whether what we are now doing is still uh, something about creating a, a back area which can be fully used. It's clear that, that there won't be a children's area, which is understandable. Every other library has one. Um, there is uh, 
most of the other benches are gone. So as far as I can see, we have now uh, restricted the use of the library to inside of the building. Uh, that's interesting, but I don't think that was what the plan involved initially. And it certainly seems to me to be a substantial difference. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Okay. That's it for public comments. I don't see any other hands. Thank you for facilitating that, Jacinta. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody wish to provide a response to Mr. Pam or some clarifications? Rachel. Thank you, Mr. Pam, for your questions about seating in the back. Tony, would it be possible to um, go to the rendering, maybe, of the back rain garden area? That might be the most visible. Um, I think what what there is some seating available on site, not as much as there was before. Um, we do have boulders and a reclaimed granite seat wall in, in the rain garden area, so folks that are uh, moving along the path can have an opportunity to stop and reflect. Um, there are the the working tables and benches at the back underneath the underneath the library overhang. Um, those are at different heights. We have wheelchair height, children's height, and adult height in that area. So that will provide some seating as well. Um, and then over time as funds are available, uh, more patio um, patio furniture can be added added to that space. So there is there is some some seating infrastructure on site. Thanks for providing that information, Rachel. Um, okay, so I think one thing I want to kind of start off with just in terms of framing this conversation, I, I thought we might go through the, the DRB guidelines again, but we've basically done that with regards to the overall mass scale proportions um, and materiality of the existing. And so I don't think that we need to reopen that conversation. The DRB has already had that conversation. So I think it's, you know, tonight, obviously uh, some of the changes do affect the whole and I wanna have all the conversation we need to have about those uh, particular items, but we don't need to uh, re-engage in a conversation about the additions, uh, shape, scale, and et cetera. And I also want to remind us that our, our scope is very much about the exterior of the building. And as the interior and exterior are, are inextricably linked, uh, it's important for us to, to, to comment on the, on the effects on the interior um, if we feel it's the case, but to the degree that there is a lot happening on the inside of this building that doesn't affect what we see tonight in terms of proposed changes. Um, we just wanna limit our, our conversation. So I open the floor um, and I think if we could kind of take it is at, in the order of the, of the presentation, um, let's begin with a dialogue about uh, the change proposed change to the roofing material. Um, the base is still uh, the synthetic, the, the base proposal is still the synthetic slate, but we're being asked to also comment on um, an alternate, which is an asphalt shingle. So uh, Karin uh, or Pat, do you want to share your thoughts? Um, so Hilda Greenbaum asked many of the questions that I would have, which is exactly what the difference in cost would be, because I agree that there's, that is, that's a biggie. That's a huge, here we have our beloved Jones Library with the uh, shingles, the, the slate shingles and I have asphalt. It's a completely different look. 
that it, it, it's a pretty big violation to the integrity of our historic Jones Library to do that. So it, it would be necessary to know that that was going to be the cost breaking thing if we were going to accept that. The other thing, the windows, that to me is also a very big thing. I wonder what the cost is for each window that that if you say seventy thousand um, dollars to just leave them as is, I, I agree, we can't leave them as is. So that's not it's not seventy thousand dollars that we we're supposed to we're building this to have a more energy efficient practical thing that people really care about that and if we eliminate that everyone uh is being told around town to be greener one of the most important things is to invest in uh really good windows and here we're going to keep these leaky windows so that's also a very big thing that we would have to know exactly, you know, is this going to be the, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back in order to approve that, I think. On the other hand, I understand the predicament of the architects. They're being asked to, to suggest things that are going to bring the budget down. So it, it definitely is a dilemma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pat, thoughts on the on the roofing material proposal? I think Karen and I are on the same page. And I asked that question about the difference in cost um, because that was an important aspect of whether the the artificial slate, which would be more contextual with the historical nature of the building, mm -hmm. uh, was worth considering. And my opinion would be that it is to preserve the 1928 building. Um, I also agree with Karen. I, I go to pre-pandemic many meetings, and and I am I go to the library. I love libraries, but I, I've been in rooms in the library with those windows that exist now, and they're not. They rattle. The the wind seems to like, or the cold seems to penetrate, and it just in in trying to make a, a green building. Um, it will cost something to repair them. And if they're replaced, then they have a lifetime that may last another hundred years. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking almost $300,000, give or take. And I know that that will, will really be important to bringing down the overall costs. But I think those are two things that are important to, to consider. Um, for the integrity of the building, its historical context, and to make it a more of a green building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm on board with you both. My skepticism about the the asphalt shingle, I think, because it's a gambrel roof and it's such a big part of what you see as you approach the building. Um, you know, it's not tucked out of sight. Uh, it's highly visible, and I, I feel like, well, I, it, you know, it kind of causes me pain to say this. Um, I don't think that I could endorse an asphalt shingle here. I mean, this is the the front facade of a historic building, um, and one that's very important to us. And I, I feel that the asphalt just isn't comparable and since we received our packet I've been doing a a tour of buildings around the region um and kind of looking for examples of an asphalt shingle that you know looked in character um with a a, a slate roof um and looking online for images and I haven't I haven't seen it so I I I feel that this is a highly visible character driving decision. Um, to if it were asphalt, I don't think that I could endorse that. No, I, I agree with you, Erica. Just 
I, 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 you know, it's it's trying to balance being able to make the plan work, but it's also we have a very special 1928 building, and it it, it is the streetscape, as we call it, and that would that would change the the um, character of that that building if it were asphalt. Um, I have a question uh, for the uh, architects. Do, did you propose still keeping the the snow guards and fence as part of the design? If you were to shift to asphalt, is that, I mean, the pitch is still the same. Do you, is it still necessary as part of it? Or is that part of the, the alternate to eliminate those as well? Those would remain. All right, good. They, they would remain. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and so we could move on to the the windows. Um, so I think I think that this would be a great opportunity to clarify a little bit. Um, if the alternate is to keep the existing windows, um, and I don't do, do I remember? Yeah, existing storm windows to remain. But given that many of them need repair, and that you know they would need repainting and such, is that been part? Is that part of the when you cited a approximately seventy thousand dollar difference? Is that is the repair of the existing windows part of that cost savings? So. We indicate repair and repaint as necessary. Yeah. But what that doesn't that, that number doesn't necessarily encompass is the level of detail that each window will need. So they would, you know, need to be thoroughly surveyed yeah. to see to to what extent. So as Tony had mentioned, it is a very um, you know, it's an estimate and um that's the best we could do with with at this time. Okay. Yeah. I mean from an aesthetic perspective, um it's you know obviously in keeping with the historic character of the building to retain the existing windows, but from a sustainability perspective, and I was wondering about um, does this building get an exemption from the new energy code because of its historic nature? Like, do, are we gonna is the building gonna meet energy code with the existing windows? Never mind net zero. Is that gonna meet code? <laughs> Right, and and it it will because um, with the the way the code is structured, existing buildings um, uh, I forget the word that they use, but um, at the moment it's exempt from it, and so um, the analysis doesn't in incorporate the nineteen twenty eight building um, into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I just add um, yeah. that? that uh, I, I own a historic building and the windows, we had them uh, painted and uh, sort of fixed up. It cost more than a thousand dollars per window just to have them taken out, scraped a little bit. There's also the question, does this now have lead paint? Are you gonna have to de-lead these uh, windows too? I think in some ways you might be, it might be much, more inexpensive to replace these windows than to do the kind of repair you have to do on an old window that has lead paint that has to be scraped and and uh, re repaired. That's it's kind of naive to think you're going to save a lot of money this way. I think. I I agree with I've. I've replaced windows. I know what that costs, but I know how much more energy efficient they are. And I agree with Karen that there, there's probably lead paint on these windows. And so to scrape them down, I mean, there, there are whole regulations about dealing with um, re refurbishing where there's lead paint and the architects are, are aware of that for sure. And so 
I'm assuming that if the windows were replaced, they would be historic, historical replicas of what's there now, but they would be energy efficient. And I I do agree, Karen, the cost, the, there would be very little cost savings to try to rehabilitate these windows as opposed to um, ordering historical replicas of the windows and replacing them. And they would have energy efficiency and they would have a long life. Yeah, I hear us all being very concerned about the, the energy efficiency, like moving to a, a double pane 21st century product. <laughs> so. mm -hmm definitely going to benefit the the interior inhabitants and we've already seen them right we've reviewed what they look like on the outside as a proposal so um should we move on then uh to discussing uh we talked about exterior lighting next as a as the next big category um and here i feel that if I'm hearing, um, if I'm recalling Rachel's presentation well, that uh, this is actually a place where some product is being added to uh, improve the, the lighting conditions around the building, like to increase the light levels around the building so that people feel safe and welcome. But the light fixtures themselves, there's no proposed changes to the array of light fixtures that we reviewed last time. And, Not at this time. I, I, I think the um, our lighting rep will be looking at the step lights, mm. um, and that that may be they may match the wall lighting that we have at the small retaining wall on the west. We're not we're not sure at this time. Probably by the end of the week, we would know what that picture will look like. Hopefully, it is small and downcast. So yeah. Okay. Um. So then we talked to, oh, I, I might have skipped the the roof monitor, apologies, um, talking about removing that uh, light source from the roof doesn't, I think from the street, there's not a huge visual effect of that, but nonetheless, it is part of the exterior scope of the building. So um, Karen or Pat, if you have any thoughts on the roof monitor and its elimination from the package, um, Karen. I think... If we, if that's our purview is just to judge the outside, then I probably don't have such an issue with it. Yeah, this is the place where the outside and the inside clearly have a, a an effective relationship, like just like with the windows, right? So absolutely, you know, comment away, but I think. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I think the whole purpose of having a new library is to have spaces that are really beautiful and attractive inside and inviting and Light is one of the most important things to create an atmosphere uh, which is beautiful. And for reading purposes, it makes such a difference, especially those of us that are getting weaker eyes as we get older or anybody to be able to, to see well, the more light and especially natural light, the better it is. So I, again, really hate the idea that this very important fixture will be removed. Thanks for that comment. And Pat? Hmm. I guess the one question we didn't ask about the monitor is what the cost savings would be to remove it. And then I think one of the architects uh, mentioned that because of the multiple windows in the, in, in, this is be for the new section, I, I believe, uh -huh. that because of the multiple windows that there would be um, a lot of light streaming in. So I, I guess I have two questions. What would the cost savings be? And um, have they monitored? Is there a way to monitor? Uh, you know, and I'm looking at the rendering right now. There, there, There's a bank of windows along the back, along the side. Um, and and I don't disagree with Karen because I, I love light. And in my own home, I have windows unadorned because of loving light. However, when you look at the rendering, I think the architects may be 
correct in that there would be a lot of natural light streaming into that room. Um, and uh, what the what the cost savings is to um, to not have it. Has that been quantified yet? That cost savings of removing. Yeah. Them? So that was part of the um, the the e analysis that we have presented, um, and that was roughly around seventy eight thousand dollars for mm -hmm. the re removal of that. Yeah. Yeah. I will say. It's Oh, go ahead, Pat. Sorry. Didn't no, I think if I were to have a choice in in where the cost savings could, could come, I would rather um, accept the removal of the monitor given all the array of windows and invest in new windows for the 1928 building. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah, and I have to say this is among the many things that causes me pain in saying goodbye to a number of things um, in the library proposal. I, I think that this is one that um, is probably the, the least painful uh, value engineered element because of the ample lighting that's coming through the windows um, in the wall and roof. So. Um, all right, uh, landscape. A lot of a lot of changes to the to the landscape uh, proposal. So, um, shifting from the, I mean, again, I, I really appreciate the really careful walk through the design, Rachel. It was it, there's a lot of, uh, like you said, kind of complicated engineering going on here that we can't see and um, really just appreciating all of that. I assume that there's some massive savings in kind of removal of the subsurface um, engineering at the front of the building and shifting all the water to the back. Um, and again, this is one of those places where I feel kind of like deeply saddened by the, the loss of that very kind of playful um, experience in the back. But I think that you you know, created here with the the three wells instead of the one big one with the bridges, something that will still be delightful. Um, so I'm appreciative of that. Um, Karen uh, or Pat, any thoughts on the changes to the landscape? There were a number of points I've only commented there on one of them, but I didn't want to hold the floor. You know, I, Erica, I agree with you. You know, the original plan for the landscaping in the back of the library was was inviting and charming, but landscaping is also very expensive, and so there it will still be green, which is important, and there will still be some trees, um, and I I think that that landscaping is one of those things that. Um, can be returned to in the future. So long as is the, you know, it's not really a greens ward, but as long as the environmental um, effect is is green with some shade trees. And that seems to have been maintained with the changes. So um, do do I love flowering bushes and plants? I do. But but I also know that if we have to sacrifice something, the landscaping can be up updated and upgraded in the future. It's and, and it won't impact the use of the building. It won't impact an outdoor space. And so my opinion is very pragmatic in terms of the of the ex, the cost exchange to allow other things that are more important to the the integrity of the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I wanted to ask a question. I don't know, is this going to be come up at all? We have changed the exterior in the elimination of the children's room and going out. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah, please. Are, are we going to discuss that? Because yeah, that's, we're in that space now, by all means, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that that's a very significant outside change, and um, yeah, aesthetically, of course, you can make it look beautiful without that. But that's that's a huge loss 
that will not in the future be easy to remedy. Um, so I wonder what we're saving by getting rid of that possibility to have the children's room just empty on the outside, the liveliness that that would bring and the joy. And, and we're serving so many, we're, we're trying to have a, a library which serves the needs of young families, students, everyone, teenagers, everyone. So uh, I I wonder what what we are saving by eliminating that. That's sort of very dear to my heart. Here, is there is there a, a line item for for the children's garden as a whole, or is it just quantities of concrete? I don't know. How do you how would you quantify that? Josephine, I don't have the, the numbers right in front of me. Um, the, the change would involve removing the concrete and the ornamental fencing um, and some additional ground covers. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, Karen, unfortunately they don't, they don't have a, a cost uh, you know, for that right now but yeah i agree with you that it's it's sad to see that go but i'm not sure that it's hard, that like should should a donor <laughs> step forward should my million dollars come um my scratch ticket when you know and i could i could somebody could donate that in the future theoretically i know that there's a lot that's being cut I'm not saying that anybody would do that, but it's like that is something that could be done in, down the road. I think that's the that's the plan here. It's true. In the uh, if you're going to rank these, then energy efficiency, sustainability is more important, mm -hmm. and serving the historical outside look of the the whole thing uh, is is more important, yeah. and that means that we have to really be careful not to uh, destroy the look with putting on asphalt shingles, I believe. Um, yeah, I, I agree with both both of you, Erica and Karen. Um, I think it, it, attention to the interior and the changes that are being made to create a, more of a children's space in the interior is, is really the first priority in my opinion. And if I'm correct, I think that um, Rachel may have suggested that that they were going to grade the area where the children's path that in the future um if there was a donor or someone wanted to gift it that it would be graded to to be able to recreate that so i i think that you know we have to we have to be careful about our our um wishes I'll call them that because my my true focus is maintaining the historical context of the 1928 building. And so if we were going to try to maintain putting on the, you know, the, the slate, artificial slate roof and replacing the windows, then there are some things that are wishes that that have to go. Yeah. And in that vein, and one of the things that I'm sad to see go is the uh, granite surfacing on the retaining wall on the north side. And I understand that that's a massive cost savings. And I wonder if you've uh, explored the cost of like maybe using a board form concrete on that wall rather than just a smooth surface. Um, it's a long wall. So it's a lot of wall. Um, and if we if if the granite is going away, could the wall itself have uh, uh, some texture uh, and some character? Mm -hmm. I know that that's probably that is more expensive than just a simple simple formwork, but something that I'd be curious about. yeah, we had we had a, a a third party cost estimator help us as we have been navigating these questions. And then as Josephine and Tony mentioned, um, the costs are kind of, you know, they're a little amorphous in the sense that 
when the at the time of the timing of the bid, the number of bidders really influence number of sub bids really influences the total cost. So we've seen on projects sometimes something is high and then a little bit later on another project something's low. So as we're throwing out these numbers, again, they're just general ballpark numbers. Um, with the concrete retaining wall, our cost estimator said that the color admix was was less than a thousand dollars to the project. So wow, that that is, you know, that is a delta, a big deal, delta savings. Um, we could inquire about uh, about a, a, a stamp or a board form to see what that what that number might be like. Um, one of the advantages of a smoother surface is that does open um, an opportunity for an art installation, a mural, yeah. um, which may be a little bit more challenging with the texture of a board form. But yeah, you're absolutely right, and as a lover of public art. Um, I, I appreciate that that's something that could be on the table for the future. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Karen and, and Pat, any other thoughts or comments about uh, landscape? Is there uh, anything that we overlooked? We didn't talk about the removal of granite benches, uh, for example. Um, is there anything that's on your mind that you wanted to bring to the table in terms of thoughts on the proposed changes? I think the granite benches are again, like the children's patio. They they can be added in the future without taking away from the overall um, accessibility and, um, you know, essential green look in the back it, with some trees and shrubs. But, but you know, the, the front is going to have a more more historical landscaping effect. And again, I'm back to the idea of the street streetscape. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very interested in having that work, but I do have a question for Rachel. Um, I think you said hydrangeas, that you, you we're gonna make a, a like a hedgerow in the front. Yeah, I can clarify that. So um, the front, linear green planting you see in the rendering in front of you mm -hmm. um, is a is, is a rhododendron um it's a it's a dwarf rhododendron okay and um so that the library won't need to trim and trim it back every year that it it should max out around the two to three feet height um the there is some planting between the parking lot and the library on the east side. Um, the, originally we had oak leaf hydrangeas. Um, again, it's a dwarf variety. It maxes out around uh, you know, four to five feet high. Um, and it had a red, red flower. Um, this is another variety of hydrangea that has a purple flower. So the difference there, similar in height, um, the difference there is, is the color. I, I guess my question about the hydrangeas, um, and rhododendrons are very hardy, and that's, you know, I, I, I think that's a great idea. But I live in South Amherst, and because we're, where I am is a little bit of a bowl, hydrangeas don't grow. And so I'm wondering how hardy the variety is that you're going to put there, and whether you have experience with them being in the climate of Amherst. Yeah, these are to zone five. Um, I know everyone says on USDA that we're, you know, zone six, six A, but we all we we always go with at least zone five um, for that reason. Well, you're the expert, but I, I just had to bring that up because I know hydrangeas are very difficult to grow in Amherst. And um, you know, it's quite different than than the shoreline where you get current warmth. Um, so I, I just I, I just had to bring it up. Thank you. Pat, I have beautiful hydrangeas. I live in the middle of town. All but right. I Go, Karen. <laughs> Go. You answered my question. Thank you. OK. Um, Chris, just to help me, did we miss anything? Do you, Chris, of course, and um, anything on your mind that 
I just um, really Add quickly, movement. we had Greta and Bruce Wilcox. Um, they had their hands up for a while and then they put it down. I don't know if they're still interested in speaking or if you're willing to allow more public comment. That's the only thing. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, let's, let's see, I just, since we're in the phase of um, hearing from DRB members and kind of going point by point, I'll, we'll finish that up and then we can um, uh, offer the Wilcoxes a moment to, to, to jump in before we make our official recommendations. So any further comments about any portion of the proposed changes, any any aspect of the proposed changes tonight, DRB members? No. Okay. I feel that I got to say the things that were on my mind. And Karen? Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, okay. Great. So then, yeah, sure. Um, we could uh, offer the Wilcoxes a moment to, to speak, and then we'll move on to our recommendations to the town council. If they're so interested, <laughs> let us know by raising your hand, Wilcoxes. Here we are. Hi, it's just Greta, actually. And I just want to, I, I really, really feel sad about the roof. Um, our My house is a historic house. I live in Amherst in the downtown area and built by the same architect. And we have a slate roof that has been no trouble for uh, for 100 years now, 102 years. And so the idea that it might be an asphalt roof just makes me so heartbroken because I think slate looks so much more beautiful. And then the um, what you were planning before Seems like a nice compromise if you have to change it. But um, asphalt seems like people that have asphalt have to change, have to redo it every 15 or 20 years. And I've been thrilled that we've never had to touch our roof and it's the same slate that the Jones has. So that's just my comment. One other quick question is you mentioned a concrete step. That's not the front that's now granite, is it? Um, I'm looking for Tony. Do you have a comment on that? My understanding is that it's concrete because they need to make it ex an accessible entrance, so they have to move the move the steps forward so that there's a landing in front of the door. Is that did I am I reading that right? Yeah. So the the landing in front of the door is um is a is a paver um, with less than a 16th inch gap between the pavers. Um, and our walkways up to into that front plaza area are concrete. Um, we do have a series of low steps um, between that accessible walkway and the main sidewalk on Amity Street and those are concrete. Um, so everything up into the building um, that there are two accessible ways um, that are less than 5%. So we do not need railings for those accessible walkways. Um, and then we, the steps are, are just directly on center to the front of the library, but they're out in the landscape. They're not at the main entry. The main entry is all accessible and flush. Thanks for, for providing that extra clarification. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best at summarizing our primary points. Um, and then ask for, I'll, I, I'll make the motion. I'm gonna summarize our points and make it a motion and then we'll have a discussion on the motion um, once it's seconded to see if I've captured our comments appropriately. The DRB seems to be, uh, we are focused on preserving the historic character and energy efficiency of the Jones Library. And as such, uh, would not approve the asphalt option for the roof and would prefer that the existing windows be replaced 
rather than kept. Um, didn't have any changes to landscape, excepting, although sad, about the roof monitor, retaining wall. Did, I think that was it. It was, it's, I, I think so, Erica, but you know what, rather than prefer, I would say recommend for the windows. Yeah, yeah, all right. So the DRB, uh, I'll make a motion that the DRB recommends the base proposal of synthet synthetic slate and the base proposal of the window replacement mm -hmm. over the alternates of asphalt and existing, maintaining the existing windows. That sounds about what we've all said. And Chris has her second? hand up, so I don't know whether she has something to add. Well, motion's on the floor. Is that a second, Pat? I'm seconding that, yes. Okay. And discussion, Chris? I just wondered if you wanted to say anything about lighting or if you were happy with the um, proposal for lighting changes. That's true. That was a change. Friendly Thank amendment. You. Somebody want to make a friendly uh, amendment? Or we can the, vote and then add a the, second. The lighting changes were positive. Yes. But it was a change nonetheless, so. Right, and so we could amend the the um, motion to say that we approve the changes in the lighting. Right. Or some such wording. Yes, I will accept your friendly amendment to accept the, approve the changes to the lighting and other changes as proposed this evening. Yes. Okay. And so, so I second the amendment. Great. So is there any further discussion or would you <laughs> like to take a vote? Okay. No further discussion. So all those in favor of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. And of course, our recommendations go to the town council Nothing here in the DRB space is binding, but um, we hope that the conversation is helpful for planning going forward. Chris? I believe your recommendations will go to the planning board. Planning, planning board, apologies, yes. They planning. may also go to town council, but I think the planning board is yeah, coming up right. next. I misspoke, it's the planning board. Yep, okay. Well, that's, that's the end of this discussion. Thank you all for your careful walk through the proposed changes. You know, this is not an easy time for the library yeah. project, but glad to be a part of it. Thank you all so much. Thank you for uh, hearing us and, and watching it all unfurl. And I really appreciated you you understand the predicament we're in. If if we don't get a bid that's affordable, none of this will happen. So right. we'll we'll be keeping these windows and we'll be keeping the fossil fuels. So just thank you for walking us, yeah, going through this process with us. Happy to be a part of it. Thanks all. Thank you very much as well. Great thank, feedback. Thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So next up on the DRB agenda, first, I feel like we should have a, just a stretch, a moment, that's hard. Um, next up on the DRB agenda is review of meeting minutes, which um, my computer kind of crashed in the middle of all this. So I uh, have to reopen the document unless you've done your homework and actually read them this time. <laughs> so um, barring that, I will open up the meeting minutes and we can uh, do a slow scroll through. Um, 
Nope, that's the agenda. Hold on, please. Okay, here we go. Screen share. All right, this is the minutes from our last meeting. Wait. Why does it say August 28th, 2023? Hold on. That's not the right one. That's the last library meeting. Um, Madam Chair, I have them pulled up. Do you want me to just share my screen? Oh, hallelujah. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Ah, oh, much better. June 17th. That looks much more recent. Um, thank you. And of course, Karin, you weren't here. So if you would be inclined to abstain from voting, maybe we should table this for the next meeting because we won't have. Yeah, I should abstain. Um, so should we hold on this and do this at the next meeting? Probably. So that we have enough members present. Um, yeah. All right. Why don't we do that? We will bump this meeting minutes to the, to the next meeting and we'll do we'll review two by the way thank you for the excellent minutes just a thing. you're welcome They're stellar <laughs> um okay and then the last uh item on the agenda is a discussion about updating drb guidelines but once again i feel that we're kind of small in in numbers um and I don't want to keep kicking this can down the road, but it's also been a long meeting. So let me take your temperature on this. I think if we had more membership present, it might be the time to discuss it. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So again, I think before next month, um, if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes to do a review of the existing guidelines. And then um, Rob Wachilla actually started the process of making some edits based on our first conversation. So perhaps we could reshare that document uh, with the board members and so that we could all be prepared for conversation by reviewing the existing, seeing where the changes, the proposed changes sit right now in their very drafty format and then coming together around a conversation. Sounds good. Okay. Appreciate that. Okay. Our next meeting would be, um, let's see, August, Ooh, August 19th. One, two, three, four. Well, the fourth. One, two, three, third. Yeah, it would be August 19th. Okay. 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 That works for me. On our calendars. Yep. Um, you know, I I'm in a performance on August 19th, so I might miss that. Oh. Well, Karen, if you can't make us your priority. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have thoughts on the DRB guidelines that you want to send in writing, we can incorporate those into the conversation because we do, we keep bumping the conversation until we have more bodies, but then there's always somebody who has something going on, which is reasonable, but um, if you want to do that review and then send some comments in writing, we can incorporate them into the discussion so you be a part of it, even though you're not here. Okay, great. Well then... Did I miss anything? No, I think so. Meeting. Thank you. Thank all. you.
this is a hard meeting. Um, I appreciate your your thoughts and comments. Um, motion to adjourn, seconded. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're off. Have a Thank nice you. Bye-bye. Night, everybody.